know, my, my estimation of the Swami increased a million fold. He embodied spirituality and his disciples wanted it. They said, oh, we want some of that. Whatever it is he's, he's having, we want, I want that. So this is the guru. So many hippies were really in love with Prabhupada and in love with the devotees and considered Hare Krishna to be the, the hippie religion at this point. If everyone in the United States believed in Krishna to the, and to the extent that you do, what would happen to this country? What would, how would it be transformed? Uh, oh, they'd be very happy and peaceful. <laughs> There'd be no more hippies. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would you describe as a hippie? Someone just smokes. You know what does that mean? <laughs> Something had started. <laughs> and he sat with us every day, morning and evening, telling us about Krishna and the philosophy. Prabhupada, who's Krishna? Krishna uh, is a historical personality, but he is the supreme personality of God. Sometimes people object that. God cannot come as incarnation. But we don't, we don't agree to that point. If we say that God cannot come, that means God becomes subjected to our order. He is so great and independent. The why he shall not come. If he likes, he can come. If he is actually the great, whatever he likes he can, that is God's position. We had a wonderful life there. It was just wonderful. It couldn't be any better. It was as good as it could get. I mean, the, it was like a family. Then one day, he was trembling all over. Swamiji had a heart attack. He was, from all appearances, leaving this world. And so the devotees were fervently praying all night in San Francisco, all night in New York. We were praying to Krishna, please don't take him away. He's just come here. Please, we need more time. We never had the feeling that he was ailing and old, but that he was the leader of the movement, and we just, just depended on him. We couldn't imagine what life would be like without him. The heart was so weak. Had this broken, I was very sick. I thought now I shall not exist. So let me go to Vrindavan and die there. We were really distraught because we felt if he goes to India, he's going to stay there. And we didn't know what to do. So Srila Prabhupada told us, just go on chanting Hare Krishna. We will be all packed up together. You will be chanting here, and I will be chanting there, and this vibration will circulate around the planet. And he turns to the picture of Bhakti Siddhanta and says, here are a bunch of people, they are not completely trained in our theology and practices, but they are very sincere and they are very enthusiastic. This is your movement, they are your people, please take care of them.
we were lost. We just couldn't accept the idea that he might never come back. For five months we grieved. received word that Prabhupada was better. We got him back. Now we had to step it up. We had to learn as much from him as we could. From the outset, our intention had been, let's do something really big for Prabhupada. And there wasn't much bigger in 1968 than the Beatles. We got news that the Beatles had been in Rishikesh, in India, studying with a guru there. And then Life magazine came out with this huge spread their new records came out with all these songs about Eastern philosophy that we had loved so much. So I came up with this idea. Go to London and start a center for Prabhupada and meet these Beatles. The first thing that we realized when we got to England is that in order to stand out, for people to recognize us in this huge metropolis, we're going to have to shave our heads. Up to that time, the thought of shaving my curly hair was atrocious to me. I didn't want to do it. Nor did we want to wrap these bed sheets around us. Yellow was the color, our first color. <laughs> we just thought yellow would really stand out in London. We named ourselves Radha Krishna Temple, the rock group. We began getting engagements at rock concert. We used to almost daily go down to the Apple offices and give the staff and everyone there the food, or books. Unbeknownst to us, George Harrison had got a hold of the Swami's record called Krishna Consciousness. And he told me later that he was listening to it almost every day. Through the Beatle experience, I'd experienced so many things and met so many people, but I realized there was nothing actually that was giving me a buzz anymore. I wanted something better. I remember thinking, I'd love to meet somebody who will really impress me. He had memorized the Swami's introduction to the album. He knew it word for word. As living spiritual souls, we are all originally Krishna conscious entities, but due to our association with matter from time immemorial, our consciousness is now polluted. In this concept of life, we are all trying to exploit the resources of material nature, but actually we are becoming more and more entangled in complexities. One day I wound up in the Apple Records offices and George Harrison was there. He saw me sitting in a group of people in the very back. He opened the door, walked through all of these people and came over to me and said, where have you been? I've been waiting to meet you. George came down to see us where we were living in our warehouse in Covent Garden. He so much appreciated the Hare Krishna mantra that he immediately said, let's make a 45 record. So we all went over to Abbey Road Studios, made that record, Hare Krishna Mantra. None of us had ever done anything like this before. Paul McCartney was there. 
and he volunteered to mix it in the, from the control booth. a feature on us and we were able to send the report back to Srila Prabhupada with the headlines Krishna Consciousness Startles London I became quite friendly at one point with Swami Bhaktivedanta who formed the Krishna Temple they call me up and say, come to the temple, um, the Swami's here and he'd love to see you. And I'd be like going through some mm, private nightmare or something and I think, how can I go to the temple And I'm like this? But then I'd go and I'd always walk out of there thinking, oh, thank you, Lord. And he said to me at a certain time, I want to do songs for Krishna. We're backstage in Apple and he says, here's this song and he plays My Sweet Lord. Hare Krishna. The music really was the key that opened the door into the yoga and the Vedic scriptures, which is really the foundation of everything. You know, it, it gave some sort of backbone to my life. Krishna said, there's no time when we didn't exist and there'll be no time when we cease to exist. The only thing that changes is the body. When George introduced this, it went worldwide. Life was an adventure. He'd call me in and say, we got invitations to Paris, Bombay, Sydney, and one just arrived from Nairobi. Where do you think we should go? By then I knew to say the wildest place. I think we should go to Nairobi. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> he always wanted to go where there was least development, where he could contribute the most.